Okay, pizza dough, part two. Um, the reason there's two parts is because this has been proving for, ooh, let's see, nearly, nearly seven hours, okay? Uh, and you'll see it's risen low, just fallen. I'm just gonna, basically, before Friday, if you're watching this after the 3rd of uh, June, this will make no sense to you. But before Friday, um, when we actually cook, I'm gonna size it, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the risen dough and we're gonna knock it down. And what knock it down is, would be to take some of the air out of it and shape it into however many balls we want, okay? I mean, look at that. So, what we do is, we flour it and we knead it again for a couple of minutes, okay? While I'm kneading it, I'll just talk to you a bit more about what we're gonna do on Friday. So Friday, we're making homemade pizzas, okay? Wicked cool. Little tip, it doesn't matter what tomatoes you've got. You can have tin tomatoes, you can make your own passata, very simply. Now, my top trick for you guys is, if you've got chopped tomatoes, passata, you've got a tin of plum tomatoes that's been in a, tin, been in a cupboard all through lockdown and hasn't, hasn't really been used, it's fine. My tip is, and I'll show you this on Friday, so please, please tune in, is you just open the tin, you put a spoonful of sugar, yeah, makes the medicine go down, a spoonful of sugar in the top of the, um, of the tin, and then you blitz it with a stick blender, and that is it. It smooths it out, takes all the lumps. So plum tomatoes are probably the best, if I'm honest. The sugar, re sugar releases the natural sweetness of the tomato, and you've got yourself your spread. Okay, so, this is lovely. We've got a lovely smooth dough, and that's what we finished with at the end of part one, wasn't it? And we put it into our bowl. Okay, now, it's Wednesday today. I'm going to be, we're going to be cooking on Friday. So, for those that are getting ahead of the game, we're going to put it onto a baking tray. Now, you can put dust, dust that with a bit of flour, so there's no sticky sticky. Don't know why I said that, it's weird. Um, <laughs> and we're gonna size it. Now the, the quantities I've done for us to, today does about four decent sized pieces, like 10 to 12 inch. So I'm gonna cut it. Uh, and you watch, watch it now when it separates. It's still alive. It's, it's still doing its thing. This is the sciencey bit. You can see where the glutens have been reacting. So we've got our four Horseman of the pock, a pizza lips. And we're gonna do the same thing again, okay? We're gonna flour and turn it into a little balls or balls. Okay, and we're just gonna basically roll it round and tuck it in. I'll slow down. We're gonna roll it round and tuck it in. Roll it round and tuck it in. And if it sticks, it won't, it shouldn't stick at this stage. It's lovely. Tuck, tuck it in, roll it round, and you'll see occasionally the, the dough will break. Just roll it around, tuck it in, until you've got your pizza base. And what we're gonna do is, pop that on the tray, okay, and go again. So this is part two. So, there is a third and final part before Friday. When you are ready to cook, we're gonna start at 6 p.m. And you want, basically, you want that at 6 p.m., but risen. So, at 5 p.m. on Friday, take however many pieces you want to do, take your ball out of the fridge, sit it on the side, do this with a bit of flour, exactly as we're doing now, and then a damp cloth over the top and let it prove for an hour. So at five o'clock on Friday, take your dough out of the fridge, do this, get your nice little mushroom on like that, yeah? As round as you possibly can make it. And put a damp tea towel over the top of it and let it, and let it cool, okay? So I'm gonna flour these, wrap them in cling film, and they're gonna be in the fridge. Until Friday, it's well done. I tell you, half of cooking well is prep and the other half is timing. Okay, so we're gonna get our clean film. We've got our little secret sauce trick. Just get a tin of whatever it is, chopped tomatoes, passata, it's plum tomatoes, and a, a spoonful of sugar and a stick blender. Woo! Cover the, uh, 
cover the uh, top of the tin. Now, because of the flour, he says, fingers crossed, the cling film shouldn't stick. And that's gonna sit in, sit in the fridge for, for two days now. Yeah, two days and 48 hours, I'm gonna take that out of the fridge and we're gonna make some pizzas. So, again, take it out at five o'clock, ball it, put a uh, damp cloth over it, let it proof for an hour, and at 6 p.m., Friday the 5th, we're gonna make pizzas. This is where you have to think for yourself and do toppings, okay? Beautiful, right? Um, listen, if you don't want to make four large pizzas, you can freeze that. I oh, know, I'm just the gift that keeps on giving. Um, if you're just doing two pizzas for a movie night or something like that, saran wrap or cling film, the ball re airtight, airtight, bang it in the freezer. And you can have it, get it out. Uh, how long does it last in the freezer? About a month. A week in the fridge, about a month in the freezer. Um, okay, so next time you see that me, will be Friday, live, 6 p.m., uh, and you, have to think yourself, get back on course, Coops. Toppings, up to you, completely up to you. I've done your dough, I've told you how to do the base sauce. Um, I'm gonna try something a little bit different, which is a pizza Bianca, um, which is new to me. I learned it off a friend today, this is Stephen Terry, thank you very much. Um, it's creme fraiche, olive oil, creme fraiche, uh, sliced potato, uh, anchovies, garlic, and onion, I think, if memory serves. Uh, but no white sauce, uh, no red sauce, so, so, hence Pizza Bianca. Right, enough rambling from me, the coffee's kicked in. I'll see you all on Friday night at 6 p.m. Takeaway pizza, I'm gonna be pepperoni and Pizza Bianca, and then sit in front of a movie and enjoy my Friday night. Take care, guys, see you soon, bye-bye. One final thing. If you're watching this, I need you to do me a really solid favor. I love doing these Friday night takeaways, and all I ask from you is to please follow me on Instagram, Cooking With Coops. Follow me on Facebook, like and share all of that, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So all I ask, no money, no nothing, just let me get, let me get some traction so I can help everyone else cook. The reason for this, and I'll repeat this until I'm blue in the face, is to give people at home more confidence in their own kitchen, okay? It's lessons that'll help. The lesson, if you want to like come to me and learn to do a specific thing, obviously get in touch and we'll, we'll set up some lessons for you. But if you could just for now, like it, share it, follow on Insta and Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. I love you forever and I'll see you Friday night. Take care, bye bye.